today we're doing something really different. This is something that I've loved to do since I was taught how to do this at college. And I'm really excited to share it with you. So please feel free to steal any of my designs. Nothing here is copyright. And I'd actually love to see you stealing some of my designs and showing us in the comments. This is starch resist. We use a non-synthetic fabric, so you can use any kind of cotton, linen, denim. And what we do is we mix flour and water into a paste. We draw our designs using a mustard or tomato sauce squeezy bottle. We draw the designs with that paste onto the fabric. We allow it to dry. When it's dry, we paint the design. And when the paint is dry, we then pick off the starch resist outline. And then you can sew your fabric swatch into whatever product you like. I've done cushion covers and shopping bags and clothing, and I'd love to see what inspires you and what you've turned yours into. So let's go give it a try. What we need to do the starch resist is a bowl of flour. I've probably got a cup and a half in here, but just try a little bit to start. Then we add a bit of water and just add a little bit at a time and you use a normal fork to mix it up. So make sure you get all of the lumps out. And just keep adding little bits at a time. So what we're trying to get here is kind of the slightly runnier than the consistency of toothpaste because you want to be able to squeeze it out of the mustard jar without it running all over the place. You need some kind of control, but if it's too thick, it's not going to come out of the bottle. And if it's lumpy, it's not going to come out of the bottle. So get all of the lumps out. I think we're nearly there. And after doing this, you don't need to go to gym to do your arms. Okay, so that's kind of the consistency we're after, where it's not falling off the fork too easily. Just slightly runnier than toothpaste, that's how it should drip. Bit of extra stirring to just make sure those lumps are out, because there's nothing worse than getting lumps in this bottle and they won't come out, so you squeeze a bit harder and all of a sudden there's an explosion of flour on your fabric and it's ruined. Okay, so there we go. So we open our mustard jar. And let's try very hard not to mess here. It's almost impossible, so if it runs down the side of the bottle, my OCD won't like it because I don't enjoy cleaning counters 17 times a day. Guide it into the top. It is advisable to get a tomato sauce squeezy bottle with a slightly bigger opening at the top, but this is what I've got, so that's what we'll use. Okay, you can pause. What we need for this starch resist is a plain t shirt. You can use white or a light grey or a very pale blue or pink, as long as the colour is very light, but it does work best on white. You need your starch ready mixed in a bottle. And you need something to put inside the shirt to stop the starch soaking through to the back of the shirt. So if you use newspaper like I'm doing, then you must use the glossy type, not the normal newsprint, because then it's, it's going to stick and you're not going to be able to tear it off the back of your shirt and you'll have a huge mess. So I'm going to insert this into the shirt, but I think what I'm going to do is fold it a bit. You don't need it right up to the edge and it's going to be a mission to get in if you do it. Okay, so our newspaper's on the inside. We make sure that we've smoothed it out. Now, and make sure it's central so the gap on either side of the newspaper under there is kind of the same. Okay, then you take your bottle of starch. Now, if you feel uncomfortable about doing this without drawing it on first, use a light colored chalk to draw on your design because the chalk will wash off. But I'm used to doing this freehand, so we're just going to go. 
So what I'm going to do for this design is start a little bit below the neck of the shirt and do a big square and I'm going to round the corners. So go really slowly. This is actually, this paste is a bit thick. It should be slightly thinner than this, but it's difficult to get perfect. But either way it works. So there we've got, well it's more of a rectangle. And then we're going to do another one slightly inside of that to create our border. So what we have to do once this is done is leave it to dry overnight. Leaving it for two days is possibly even a better idea so that it's really bone dry when you go to paint. Because I'd hate for you to streak your paintbrush through this and wipe starch across the fabric. If you make a mess when you're doing this and you want to redo it, you actually have to pick the starch off once it's dry. So you'd allow it to dry, you pick it off and you, you wash the item of clothing paying particular attention to where the starch lines have been because you have to wash the starch out because even if you pick that off the starch is still going to be coating the fabric and if you paint over that you still will have the resisted line okay then around this border we're going to do lines across the corners and it really does take a bit of practice to learn to control this paste it would be a good idea if you practiced on a scrap of fabric before you did your shirt, just to have an idea of how to control this paste. So I'm just doing lines No, this really isn't listening to me. Okay, so we're going to do that the whole way around the border. Okay, now that the board is done, we're going to take a line from the top all the way to the bottom, dividing that in half. And please don't worry about being 100% perfect and accurate. Starch resist is allowed to be slightly messy. It's not about perfection. Then we're going to divide that into thirds. So a line there and a line there, going horizontally. So the starch has dried nicely on the fabric and when you knock it, you should hear a tap. That's when you know it's ready to paint. So what you do to get a nice effect with your painting, and I've put a plastic placemat inside this shirt that I'm painting so that when I paint, it doesn't transfer to the back. You lift up your fabric, put your hand inside underneath it, and you actually crack all this hard starch because the more cracks you have the more of a design you're going to have on this you can shove paint between all the cracks and then you will have like a crackle effect on your artwork so it's quite tricky it goes really hard but crack it as much as you can When you start painting, just double check that your plastic is nicely underneath where you have to paint because even if it's a fraction off, the paint is going to go through and make a blotch on the back of your shirt which will be very ugly and then it's ruined. So what you need to do is pick colors that will blend nicely together. So I've got green that blends nicely into light blue that will blend into the dark blue and then blend into the purple. Don't put clashing colors next to each other. So if it's um, orange going into green it's going to blend into brown and look terrible choose colors in the order that they will blend nicely think of a rainbow you can do it in the order of a rainbow which would work really well so with fabric paints they can get very smelly when they are old and smell like your little brother's fart but even if they smell they work absolutely fine as long as you um, iron them when they dry it will be fine so just keep using them don't throw them away so we're going to start with the light green. 
and we just stay in the lines and all these cracks we made we're going to paint into the cracks now with fabric paint you have to make sure not to leave blobs so you have to mush those blobs away if you see any blobs just mush them until they disappear so I've done a little section of green there so just in a rough straight line it really isn't perfect then where you've got nice big cracks lift it up from underneath and get the paint into those cracks like that and then lay it flat and smooth it over remember don't leave any lumps because if you leave lumps they bubble in the wash and end up peeling and looking absolutely terrible so you've got to make sure that you quite violently smooth out any of those lumps this blue has gone a little bit old and lumpy but like i said with fabric paint i never throw it away once it's washed once the clothing's ironed and washed nobody knows the difference fabric paint can last for 20 years so you just do the same thing we're now going to do a rough stripe of blue but as we get to the green we're going to blend them together so we're going to lose a bit of our green with the blending this one's a little bit thicker so it's quite hard to spread often colors are different consistencies so just like i did with the green i'm going to lift up and get blue into these cracks okay and try not to go out the line on the edge try and stay in those lines otherwise you really don't have to be too careful on the inside you just go mad okay so now i've done my strip of blue and i've worked quickly so it's still nice and wet and we can blend so I take the blue that's on my brush from painting and I just start to rub it into where it touches the green. And you just go in little circles working along like that, blending it together. And as you go up, you'll get more of the, of the green on your brush and you can just blend up a bit more so that it fades nicely into the green. So you've got to make this, the fade is, not too obvious you know you don't want it a solid line so you just keep brushing upward like that in little circles until it looks like a little bit of a tada how it blends together so now i'm going to take my darker blue and paint a stripe of that but because of the texture of this yucky light blue paint i'm working with i'm actually going to blend before i finished painting the stripe because this light blue was much thicker than the other colors so let me just get the whole way across with a little stripe and then I'm going to blend quickly before it dries because if the paint has a lot of paste white in it that's the thick white paint that they mix to make the colors if it's got a lot of the paste white it's much thicker and clumpier and it's harder to blend if it's nice and transparent it's going to blend really easily so let me blend now before it dries so we do the same thing just little circles where the colors meet all the way along and remember to lift to get into the cracks and we just keep blending and then once you've blended like that you just go up a little bit more and keep doing circles because you want it to be a nice nice smooth transition from the one color to the next okay so the dark blue stripe is done and we're going to do exactly the same thing with this awesome purple just mm. paint and blend we love purple <laughs> we sure do <laughs> Yeah, everybody that knows me knows my purple obsession and the lady behind the camera is even worse her hair is purple her nails are purple her glasses are purple whoop, whoop. <laughs> so we finished painting the whole square all good and 
check that it's all blended nicely together that it looks a bit like a dye and now we have to leave this to dry overnight so a good 24 hours and when you check that it's dry feel it make sure that it's dry to the touch and then you can start picking off these outlines once the outlines are picked off you make sure that all the little powdery bits are gone scratch it with your nail and I have to just give you some advice with how to pick you lift from underneath and you lift the bits and pull them off don't try and do it with your nails because it can actually cut you and make you bleed so carefully lift with the side of your thumb and throw all of that away and then uh, you can iron it and wear it and it's all good so heat with the iron and even a tumble dryer will help set the color because heat cures the color onto the fabric so it doesn't wash out This has gone hard what we do is we just put our hand inside you remove your board from inside the shirt you put your hand inside to lift the starch and you start pulling it off and you can see where we've gone inside the cracks that we made it's made these beautiful crackle this beautiful crackle effect here And you can see as you lift the starch that it leaves the white of the background behind. And next time I think I need to fill in the cracks a bit more because you see these blank spaces here that could have been really nicely crackled. Live and learn. So you just keep picking off the starch. And don't use a sharp object to do this because you'll like a knife or something to lift it because you'll end up cutting through the fabric and I know it does get a bit tiresome on your hands but just do one small project at a time don't take on anything too big before you've tried something small and you know what it's all about now what you're going to do is you're going to just let it stand for a bit make sure you're dusting off all the little particles of starch and that you haven't left any remnants behind and then you need to iron it with quite a hot iron but not over the front of the picture you're going to turn the shirt inside out and iron from the back of the picture because the heat cures the paint to the shirt and then it won't wash off and if you see any lines around the edge of your design that look dirty. That's just how the starch behaves on the fabric. That will eventually wash off. Mm -hmm. 